um, it's going to be a great session. I know everyone's been waiting in anticipation to hear Saxon's presentation. Let's talk about what Eritropolis is. And um, we've had the opportunity of, of participating in two recent conferences, and one of them was the Airport City Conference in, in, in Johannesburg. And this word of Eritropolis has come up you know, quite continuously in the last 12 months or so. But what it really is, is it's defined as, as an urban development form comprising of aviation intense businesses and related industries and enterprises. Uh, we extend outwards to uh, major airports creating a city, a layout, infrastructure and economy around an airport area. With an airport at its core, the multi-module and multifunctional interlocking provides the ideal platform for attracting investment in retail, hotels, offices, industrial parks, manufacturing centres, agriculture, entertainment and a lot more. And as you'll see today during the course of my presentation, we saw an introductory video that shows what Dubai Trade Port and Dubai Trade Port Corporation can offer. I'm going to show you what we've actually got on the plate at the moment and where our infrastructure is going to be moving towards. So business opportunities really are there and our goal is how do we together bring this thing and move forward to the future. Eritropolis KZN, which is the heart of Dubai Trade Port, is the home of the Kinshaka Airport. And for people that don't know, we house Kinshaka Airport um, and it forms an integral part of our business and our business hub. We are planning and hoping through business partners that this is going to be the next major trade business development hub on the continent. Accordingly, um, we are clearly demarcating areas of operation. We have four um, areas in our business which include the Dubai Trade Zone, the Dubai City, Agri Zone and the Dubai Cargo Terminal. These zones are supported by Dubai Eye Connect, which exists, as we said or seen earlier in the video, to provide South Africa's most advanced network with the terms of huge sophisticated world-class IT systems, telecommunication platforms for the users that digitally connects themselves with other businesses in that area, both locally and internationally. Dubai Trade Port is the core of the Aerotropolis, as I've mentioned earlier, and brings together both public and private investment, and it is supported by both communities. So I'll be spending a little bit of time of showing you where we are and what we've been doing in the last 18 months. The Trade Zone um, is an advanced environment of multi-module logistical platform. It's a specialised, freight-orientated business precinct, which is especially, especially ideal for businesses whose supply chain and cargo connectivity is of core paramount. This precinct comprises 26 hectares, of which will be phase one, and it's increased to be, uh, it will be increased to 77 hectares on the completion of phase two. We offer fully serviced airside real estate, perfectly generating warehouse, manufacturing, assembly, air-related cargo distribution, high-tech aerospace services, Automatic, automotive industries, clothing, textiles, coal storage. So you can see from that there's really no industry that we can provide a platform for. Our Dubai Trade House is the centre of our Dubai Trade Zone and Trading House. It offers integrated warehouse and office space for 19 logistic companies currently. It's the first resource of its kind in the world, which, which houses all the freighters and shippers that are located around one single building, with a direct, direct access to the airside um, secure link to Dubai Cargo Terminal via the elevated air bridge, and we'll see that a little bit closely later. <clears throat> so, we ensure that what we do with this service that we provide, we ensure that the forwarders have a seamless cargo flow which connects and allows speed and agility to tenants with the customer supplies both locally and internationally via the airport. The trade zone, which is an industrial development zone, we've got currently, as we speak, more than 525 million rand that has been invested already as we speak in, in phase one. Um, that equates to about 65% of the available land that has already been leased out. Currently, as an example of that private investment, we have two major investors in the country, in the, in the KZN area, namely Street Property Group, that is developing a distribution center for its tenants from industries such as pharmaceuticals, logistics and cold storage. He will be covering 21 sites of our area just for his own private investment that he's made in the Dubai Trade Zone. Brinka Reeland Joint Venture, as another example, is developing an assembly plant for construction bearings and seals, and he's taking two of our industrial sites. 
And that equates to over 525 million rand, as I've mentioned earlier. Construction of these two, these two sets of facilities are going to be starting shortly, and I mean in the next few weeks. So we'll have earth, move, earth moving and cranes starting on our premises very shortly. In addition to that, the trade zone is the home of another three planned uh, Dubai trade port buildings, inclusively of Trade House, which we'll show you later, um, which is operational currently and facilitates both air chefs and the Gift of the Givers Foundation will also be developing their premises in our area. To betray Corporation itself, as a business, we hold 35,000 square meters for planned strategic developments in the precinct ourselves. Um, and that also just shows that we have a lot of confidence in our own development uh, opportunities. The impact of these developments will create significant momentum in the Dubai trade zone, greatly assisting with the establishment of the precinct as the prime new location for the Durban property market. Phase two of this trade zone is proposed to be launched in 2015. So our focus over the next 18 months really is looking at the operational and infrastructure development to support the 65% the, the um, property that has already been leased and sold out. Moving along to Dubai City. Dubai City is the first purpose planned airport city in Africa, and we're very proud to say. Um, we, with this innovation and eco-sensitive environment, we provide a premium office for relocation for retail, a call centre, hospitality and leisure, leisure space. Uh, we would have something as an example for medical, uh, in a medical environment, commercial and conference facilities for knowledge intensive activities and as we see that on the screen. Ultimately what we'd like to happen here is that we become the environmental of the where global and local need for business and for leisure purposes. We're really three minutes away from the airport um, where we house, and as we said, we're going to look at all those facilities on that area. Dubai City follows sustainable development principles, creating an ultra-modern urban green area hub, immediately adjacent to King Shaka, as I've mentioned, and we've benchmarked a four-star green rating for this whole development. The world-class business and leisure area's first phase, comprising 12 hectares, is divided into eight blocks, providing 45 fully serviced stands and supported by a fully reticulated fiber optic cabling. So when you bring your business to our, to our precinct, we already have the infrastructure laid down to support your development needs. In line with this, the environmentally sensitive areas in the Dubai City's overall design incorporates pedestrian free, friendly zones with such, such things as tree-lined boulevards, dedicated cycling lanes, open lawns and the likes. I'm very proud to say that we've hosted um, quite a few uh, sporting events at our, at our precinct, mostly this, the, like the trial run and also some mountain bike facilities and that is what we're going to be doing in the future that we can bring private and business to that area and integrate those two. On the Dubai City map, um, we're looking at the area, it's, it's also housing our own head office as we've seen in the video earlier, namely 29 degrees south. Currently as we speak we've uh, completed a study for a hotel market survey and we are the advanced areas of discussion and negotiations for the developer to come on board to build an integrated hotel and office facility in the heart of Dubai City. This is, this is proposed to be a five-storey hotel serviced and um, integrated in that area as we see there. We're moving along to our Dubai Agri Zone and this creates a lot of interest in all our um, shows that we, that we participate in. The Agri Zone is the most technology advanced future farming platform in Africa and has the largest climate controlled growing area under glass on the continent. Phase one of the development of AgriZone is undertaken over a two year period and is completed recently. This is Africa's first integrated perishable supply chain and close proximity to the airport ensures minimal handling of time of the harvest into the transit area. We have sophisticated agricultural growing, packing and distribution facilities that comprise 16 hectares of glass house under growing areas, four dedicated pack houses, distribution and value adding centres, leased and operate currently by farmers. This is in full operation, as I said, the completion of the 16 hectares has been done recently. The Agri Lab is the most modern, ultra-modern ultra modern tissue culture facility uh, on the continent and its capacity is to produce more than 5 million plantlets per annum. We are very well positioned to become um, and, and support the business export of the young plantlets around the world. Our primary role is facilitating the contract planting and propagation by request on order for all um, horticultural businesses that are looking towards 
export markets. AgriZone operates operations are offset by a range of green initiatives including rainwater harvesting, solar energy usage and the growth of indigenous trees in our site-wide rehabilitation process. We are currently focusing on the production of short shelf life vegetables including tomatoes, cucumbers, yellow, yellow and green peppers together with the production of um, tulips for export into the, into the um, Amsterdam market and this takes place in their off season or their winter season around October and March. We have 30,000 tulips that are, that are exported a week um, to this market and this is in the Dutch off season as I've mentioned. So the securing of this high profile export contract is a significant benefit to us as a business and we must certainly lead ever greater confidence in professional ability to the future farming platform. Our focus for this year is to export 30% of our locally produced product. Over the last 12 months, we've enabled ourselves all the teething problems with the AgriZone um, and we've overcome that. So the product producer that's actually coming out of that facility now is world class. The, the, um, con the HACCP controlling environment with regards to uh, contamination is all taken care of and now we're poised for export markets, both on the fruit and veg side, together with uh, the plantations that we spoke earlier and also then the, the, the flower, flower opportunities. Phase 2 of AgriZone is probably going to be opened later this year with another 16 hectares to be developed for future use. We've spoken about and a big focus for our, for our business this year also is the cargo terminal. Now the cargo terminal is a 38 square metre state of the art facility and it's, secure in, it's the first secure building of its kind in Africa. We are very proud of the fact that we have to date and we opened in inception in 2010 zero losses since that inception date on our cargo. Now if we, we all know what happens at our Tambo, our competitor, so our real focus this year is to, to bring business through the cargo terminal in case in stimulating our economy, both for our own business but also for the region as a whole. So this is quite a, quite a big thing and we're hoping to keep that zero tolerance rate at our, at our site. Also, Boost, as previously mentioned, a fully automated overhead conveyor air bridge which links cargo terminal to the trade zone and freight forwarders. We, are own, we own it and operate the Dubai Trade Port Corporation. The cargo facility is capable of rapidly handling about 100,000 tonnes currently with an increase of about 2 million tonnes by 2060. Now, 2060 seems like a long time away, but we as a business have a 60-year plan. Our master plan is 60 years, which we, we are actually 10 years into that master plan. So we have the capacity and capability of actually growing our, our export business through a cargo terminal quite substantially. So we recognise that we are still in the infancy stage of our cargo terminal, but we're very proud to announce that our, our volumes through the cargo terminal have increased by 30% year-on-year -year from last year. And uh, we, we, don't, we don't only use restricted um, produce like perishables, automotive parts, we have a whole range of products that actually can go through our cargo terminal. Most recently, um, we've had a profile that we've partnered with Emirates, and Emirates now currently is flying directly to King Shark International Airport once a day. And they're using A330-200 Boeing jets, and also the A777-300 Boeing jets and cargo capacity scheduled to Durban and Dubai through our cargo terminal. Thai Airways, since the inception of this two occasions of made special um, note that we'd like to share with you this morning is that a huge freighter aircraft assisted with a business enterprise both here and abroad and we were able to airlift um, automated parts for Toyota to the Japanese market after the earthquake some two years ago. Most recently, we're very proud to say, that as recently as the 22nd of April, we saw the Antonov A124, the world's largest manufacturing cargo aeroplane um, with a payload of 90 tons landed at King Shaka Airport and we were able to, at a very quick turnaround time, load a 54 ton acid cooler from the Dubai to Dubai cargo terminal with a destination of um, Australia for, for the business. So these are quite large earmarks that we have and we're very, very proud and moving our business forward to see that we can actually offer Many, many different facilities through the cargo terminal and this has only demonstrated the ability to actually turn around time secure and fastly through our business. In addition to this, 
um, we, we also have a fully fledged Dubé air rod, we saw that on the video earlier, that enables us to have air to, air to road site connectivity and fast track your business needs with speed. I'd like to then move along to what is up and coming for our, um, our business in the next uh, 18 months or so. And as we've said, that we've, we've achieved some significant successes since May 2010 when we opened the airport uh, just before the World Cup. But a lot has to be done and we are really focusing as a business and as a team to ensure that the projects actually come to fruition and are visibly seen so that we don't, uh, that we don't lag behind our deadlines and our master plan. So the first thing would be is that on the AgriZone Phase 2, as I've mentioned earlier, that we'll be opening that later this year in 2015. Our second phase uh, development, we currently, wait, currently the reason that we're waiting for 20, 2015 is that we're waiting for environmental approval um, to come through, which is where the, the backlog is on that one. Phase 2 development of the existing trade zone, as I've mentioned earlier, We've, we've got a few projects happening at the current moment cut there, and one of them would be the Shukela project, which is the old uh, Watson Highway, and this links the, the Watson Highway to the cargo terminal to allow access for big cargo and, and, um, and trucking to come through a side area and not through the actual physical port and terminal of the airport. So that process is actually underway, and I think Owen mentioned to me the other day it's another 18 months before that is totally complete but we're in the far stages of that actual construction. The second planned development is the Dubai Trade Zone Shikela project, as I've mentioned. The joint venture initiative between us and Tonga Tula development comprises of 135 square hectares, or hectares, I beg your pardon, and uh, this is, has an estimated bulk of about 536 square metres. And what we're wanting to do here is, is the national extension of our Trade Zone 1 and 2, as mentioned earlier. <coughs> A few weeks ago, there was uh, a huge hype, a lot of media attention around the BRICS summit. We as a business played a big important role through NEC uh, with, with opportunities that we as a business have offered. And I'd like to just share with you what, is, what has come and culminated from, from that conference recently. As we all know, because it was publicized, that we signed a memorandum of understanding with an Indian business conglomerate, Action Group. And the initial memorandum of understanding was a 2 billion rand investment into a mega industrial integrated township. This comprises about 240 hectares. And uh, we look forward to, once it's complete, it could generate about 20 billion rand of foreign direct investment for the province and for the city. So we are focused, we have weekly updates of where we are with the MOU and all the information and technically that we need to put forward on that. And it's going to be a big milestone when we get that memorandum actually concluded at the end of the end of the year, which is where the 12 month period that we're talking about. So there's a huge amount of focus because of that 20 billion rand um, direct investment that's possible. So we are really focused to continue growth in this region um, and in South Africa as a whole because we are a flagship as from a business perspective, and that and that has been um, will also be the next 18 months as, as focus. So I'd like to just allude to before I move on from BRICS. With the memorandum understanding of the action group, what we are marking to do in that 20, 240 hectares space is we're looking to build an industrial area, commercial space, logistic hub, which is inclusive of truck, bus and, bus and container depots, ready to use warehousing, a way bridge centre, training institution and industrial retail park, first of its kind in South Africa. The, the significance of this partnership is that the Action Group will bring in some of its own business uh, business partners for further inf um, investment into, into our area through the uh, international platform that they do business with. So that just shows that again, once again, there is private interest in a public entity such as ours. So, conclude, so to conclude, the way forward and how we're going to move our business forward is that I trust that I've demonstrated today that we do be are really focused to develop this major, major, a big important major project and we move forward from a destination worthy of your investment. In line with global trends, Dubai Trade Port is ideally located to facilitate speed, agility and connectivity necessary to make your business and remain your business as a global platform. 
With the input at its core, we as infrastructure and investment platform will make South Africa the premier logistic platform in the South African continent. So the question really to all of you that are here today that can mobilize business is can we afford to not support each other and make this happen? I'd like to say that I don't think that it's possible. I think that we're all here today to ensure that we can do this together. So how do we move our business forward? It's by establishing, as Andrew said earlier, is relationships. Build our relationships that we can return as a global business, move forward and establish the environment to invest foreign investment. We'd also like to see private investment coming through and as I said that we will facilitate that as a public entity. We were given a, a, a compliment yesterday to say that we're one of the private entities that have a focus on turnaround times. Uh, you know, so I think that we will hold ourselves proud that we're looking at how do we do business in private business but actually facilitate it to the public entity forum. So we challenge you to, to come and see what we're all about and how we will facilitate your business venture together. So thank you very much Andrew and Wayne for facilitating and allowing me to give you a heads up of what our business is doing and I really look forward to partnering with you all in, in, in the future of how do we actually take KZN and Durban to the higher level as far as our um, business environments are concerned. So thank you. Thank you.